We are back. Uh, that was a little clip of some interesting shenanigans going on with Sawtooth Willie. Go look up Sawtooth Willie on the YouTube and Facebook. Um, and it's a wonderful uh, hobo action for you. So uh, now is the time for the big question with Papa Lunchbox. Papa Lunchbox, what do you got for us this week? So we've been doing this podcast for a fucking long time. Yeah, right. And about 10 years. Roundabout. Like roundabout round 10 years. About, that's correct. Give or take a week, 10 mm-hmm. years. And so, as you could imagine, we've seen a lot of wrestling. A lot of wrestling. Uh, and I, there's been some interesting changes, some interesting uh, advances in professional wrestling. Uh, the landscape today is very different than it was 10 years ago or even just five years ago. I feel like there's been more changes in the past five years to professional wrestling, how we consume it, and uh, 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 how it's presented um, than in the past you know, 20 so my question to you is there I think I think oh, I'm sorry to that and there's a lot of excellent things happening in professional wrestling. We've got the WWE Network. We've got NXT. Um, I mean, for God's sake, we watched a, a, a fucking multiple hour long Japanese wrestling event with English commentary live. We just fucking watched it live. You couldn't do that shit five years ago. That was fucking a uh, uh, crazy mystery how not only rich people do it oh you're still working on that beard problem aren't you yeah <laughs> shut up yes so my question to the assembled panel is what has been the best <clears throat> improvement in the past five years of professional wrestling the best improvement in five years of professional wrestling the greatest improvement. That's that's better. That's <laughs> yeah, that is better. But fucking, um, I don't have a beard, Sorg. I can only do so much. That's true. That that is also true. That is also true. The biggest improvement. Um, I, we I think I think to your point, the technology aspect that we can watch so much of it now. I think that's that's the biggest one. I mean, I, I don't know if somebody could come up with something else, but to me, we can watch New Japan live. We can watch. You know, if you really want to watch like progress of wrestling, the Revolution Pro, or you know, now you have Lucha Underground. You have all these different uh, mediums now to where you can watch pro wrestling in 2016. So I guess to me, that's the one off the top of my head. I can't really think of another one. I think um, I agree with that, and and if I can add on that, it's things like eye pay per views. You know, that that indies that can become accessible and, and get the. You know, of course, being on that side of that, like you know, getting that stuff uh, out there is 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 easier if you're smart about it. Um, I think that, that that lends to that. I think also part on that. I, I I think independents, the wrestlers, independent wrestlers, are finding more success. You know, um, guys like the Young Bucks, uh, you know, staying of course now that they've signed, uh, staying how they didn't really have much desire to be anything much more than free agents at the time. You know, even AJ Styles leaving and kind of being all over the place and and making a b- even bigger name for himself. Guys like Matt Seidel, guys like Colt Cabana. Colt Cabana kind of molded this idea of, of, hey, guys, you need to brand yourself out there and you can create this media empire as an independent pro wrestler and do these sorts of things. And and on, and you can see that's proven as, as a thing, as the big names, the Stone Colds and everybody followed him, at least in the podcasting route. Um, you know, I, I, I think... You know, of course, all these guys want to get to WWE, and there's, of course, a great opportunity there, I think, with NXT. You know, you're seeing guys like Ciampa and, and, and Johnny Gargano even getting a, getting a shot up there, and it doesn't feel like just a dark match. It's like they went and killed it, you know, um, and I think that's going to go a longer way, and that even helps their brand. Again, they can go do more kick-ass stuff and even probably demand a higher price tag on the indies or go other places. Um, I've got a, I've got another one, but I'll let you finish. Uh, if I go around, but, I just thought of another. But one. yeah, so generally, generally, yeah. just that 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 these guys can take advantage of the online accessibility of all these places and make their own brand bigger and and just do better business without the the, the WWE behind them. So, what uh, uh 
we'll go to you guys and we'll get back to you, Vaughn, okay, for that one? Yep. All right. Uh, LB, Matt? That's funny you mentioned uh, Copacabana. I was trying to think of, like, technological things, and you sent me under a tangent of, like, like, who are the guys who have, like, who changed the game over the last, you know, five years or so? And Cole Cabana is definitely one of the guys. He changed the game. I mean, he put the podcasting thing on the map for everybody. Um, and you even hear, like, even, um, like, the Young Bucks, and I'm sure a lot of other independent guys have said things along these lines, too, that the Young Bucks kind of learned – how to market themselves by watching Cole Cabana and seeing the way he interacted with people. And he kind of like kind of showed the indie guys how to make something of themselves without a big machine behind them. And then, then I got thinking about Cole Cabana and I start to think about Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder is another guy and it's easy to laugh about it now, but when he launched that YouTube series, that was a total game changer. Nobody else was doing that. Um, the social media thing for wrestlers really wasn't, as big as it is, nearly as big as it is now, obviously. Um, and he found a way, a completely new way that no one had ever used before on that scale and in WWE to get himself over and get himself back on TV. And it'll just give him a shot at having a nice career. Granted, eh, I guess it didn't work out. But those two guys, very influential and underrated in uh, 21st century pro wrestling history, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, a good point Garza mentioning that uh, Cold Souls is the guy behind Pro Wrestling Tees as we found out in that interview uh, a little bit ago uh, that we had with the, the guys from there um, so it, it really Pro Wrestling Tees is a big improvement it is in just a way to help these guys you know make a living mm -hmm. um, you know the, the, the Pro Wrestling T-shirt Superstore sword everyone come here and, <laughs> and find your thing there you go. WWE Shop and Pro Wrestling Tees. Pick one. Yeah. LB? Um, I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the, 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 we've talked a lot about new technologies and things like that. I think that can't be ignored. But I think as the result of that is the best change because it's not just – like WWE's on TV. That's all we can see. If there's no one else on TV, then nobody knows any other style of professional wrestling except for WWE uh, and TNA whenever they're on, whenever. Um, but now with this rise in technology, you, we are seeing different styles. We're seeing different organizations. Um, we're seeing different professional wrestlers. You can follow a specific wrestler in a way that you could never do before. It's not just, I love watching his matches in WWE. It's, I have seen his matches in ring of honor. I've seen them in NXT. I've seen them in TNA and you know, you can kind of cherry pick in a way that you couldn't before. And I think that's magic. You know what I mean? That's like fucking witchcraft compared to, you know, back in the day when it was, well, we had one flavor and that's it. That's the end. As a result we're getting a more diverse product uh, across the board. I think it's um, it's it's making almost everyone step up their game, uh, and I think that's a that's a fantastic thing. Uh, there was for a long time, you know, WWE bought WCW, and they were really the only game in town. And the argument was, well, they do best when they have competition. Well, they have a fuckload of competition now, and it's great. That's my answer. They're all taking a little bit of piece away from that pie, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what yeah. you may be seeing in those ratings a little bit. I'm like, yeah, I'll watch something over here. I'll watch something over here. Um, and and uh, we'll see what we got in the chat room. Garza is saying, uh, the future is that refs and wrestlers will wear GoPros and you'll be able to choose. Wait, that's a different thing. That's that's predictions. I, don't think, he's, I think he's on the wrong big question. Is he watching a different show, maybe? <laughs> um, but... Uh, anyways, uh, uh, is, is that something happening on TNA right now? Maybe uh, uh, beer and money just got back together oh for boy. the 13th time. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, bring Bobby Roode back with you to NXT, and they'll be okay. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Hey, we got uh, Eamon, Eamon Payton, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, is with us. Before we uh, uh, let let LB go here, uh, uh, Eamon, do you have an answer to the big question? Uh, I, I really like LBs. I, I, I agree with him completely. The um, I, I think a lot of people think 
it's considered WWE for the longest time to be the be all end all when it comes to wrestling. And I think, I mean, part of truly is that that's true. When I talk to non wrestling fans about wrestling, they say WWE as wrestling kind of interchangeably. Like it's it's not you know people don't know wrestling; they know WWE. Um, but there are viable alternatives, and there are um, you know organizations where you know you could consider these people to be, you know, their top level stars to be the best in the world. You don't have to be working, you know, a WWE schedule and, and doing all that to be considered one of the best in the world. And um, I think that's great. I think that's really, really great. Awesome. Uh, sorry, I, 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 there's there's some anger over the spoilers for TNA. Apparently, yeah, <laughs> but, hey, respect the respect right now. Respect, respect the. Oh my god. Big James Storm returned, but right. James Storm was in the, their tournament. How is it a return? I don't know. I, although I do respect James, James he... Storm's presence was reported by the Associated Press. <laughs> it was no <laughs> secret, right, bud? There you go. Damn right. There you go. <laughs> um, um, go, go ahead. I was just going to get in on this uh, the globalization of professional wrestling. Um, that we, we always have this habit of looking inside the United States for the competition for WWE, and we end up looking at Ring of Honor and, and TNA and whatnot, but, you know, AAA and New Japan. And now you're seeing the, the, the British promotions, these Indies out of Britain starting to make their inroads and sending all this British talent over here, like, you know, Zack Sabre and, and those folks, and, and it gets... It's crazy, and you, I, I'm wondering like where the next, what, what's the next frontier that is going to get like um, all the fans excited about uh, another country and the wrestling going on in that country. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's interesting, like uh, uh, like the whole common thing, like I think with most people was like, you know, oh, if you know these people that are in New Japan or if you know these like top level indie talents, oh, you must be like a hipster because your favorites aren't like the WWE talents. Oh, the and stuff like, we say to you. Well, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> but but it's like, no, I mean, like, WWE's posting articles about Nakamura and AJ Styles and their things in wrestling. You know, if they're, they're as viable as anything else. And, mm. um, yeah. And when they come to, like, say, WWE, it's a big deal because of their name value. So. I think uh, as much as all of that, everything that everybody said is a big improvement. One of the biggest improvements is the coverage pro wrestling receives uh, from the mainstream media as well. It's not just Dave Meltzer and Wade Keller and Mike Johnson anymore. It's not just the websites with nothing but links and crazy, crazy rumor. Now it's Philly.com. It's USA Today. It's, it's Grantland or was Grantland. ESPN has a weekly segment on SportsCenter. Even though it's on ESPN News, it's still SportsCenter. That's still huge. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, Sports Illustrated has stuff. Uh, they they broke the Marlon Hour story a couple weeks ago. Uh, Fox Sports has a Jim Ross column, and they do wrestling. I mean, all these different forms where you can find wrestling content, whether it's breaking news or just a fun story or a feature story. I remember when um, Seth Rollins did a series of interviews last before Battleground last year. I I did I interviewed him, and then I looked for like you know Seth Rollins' name. I googled his name and see where else he interviewed. It was Sports Illustrated. It was USA Today. It was all these different types of Big major outlets. Rolling Stone has done wrestling stuff. Uh, Up Rocks, obviously. Well, and, was, you know, on Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone is the, is doing indie, Young Bucks, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Dalton Cole Castle, like, Cole Cabana. It's crazy. Yeah, so I think that's pretty cool. You know, and I don't know if it's really helping it become more mainstream, but I think these these websites are recognizing, hey. There's money here because some content does do good on the internet. It does do very good traffic online. So, mm-hmm. you know, why not have, uh, you know, content? And hopefully it's, it's not – I think another thing also is the acceptance of wrestling fandom. It's not just the thing you share with one or two other people. Now it's like – like you said, the hipster thing. It's almost like hipsters are like almost in chic now. It's like they're in vogue now. Mm-hmm. It's almost cool to be a hipster. It's almost cool to be a nerd. So along with being a Star Wars fan – and a Ninja Turtles fan. Now wrestling is all with that too. You're like a hipster because you're a wrestling fan as well. So it's like I like both of those. Where the, the, the mainstream coverage has increased over the last five years, and the fact that it's almost become a part of 
the nerd culture that has become popular now, whereas before nerd culture wasn't quite popular. I think I think we've got just a little bit further to go, but I, I know what you're talking about, and we're so close. Like we we got there with the comic books. Um, where I I like I think we're there with video games. We got to get there with wrestling. We got to make all of society accept wrestling, and just and just live with it and deal with us forever. <laughs> because there you go, LB. Another great big question as usual. That's not LB. He's over here. Did he leave already? There he is. No, I'm here. Hey. There you are. I don't know what you look like anymore, so I was confused. Uh, I know. You and Eamon are interchangeable now. That's so oh, high. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? Bob, Lunch Boss, you're going to uh, kick out of here so we can go talk some Japan wrestling. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Japan, yeah, Japanese wrestling. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, this is going to go great. Your beard is screwing me up now. <clears throat> but anyways... Um, uh, thank you so much. Panelriot.com at DJ Lunchbox. And also check out Sawtooth Willie on the YouTubes and the Facebooks. Um, I don't know. Anything else? Anything else big you want to talk about? What's coming up on Panel Riot? Uh, coming up on Panel Riot, I am reviewing a comics, comic bento box that I received. It is a monthly subscription service. And uh, I am reviewing. So the first four episodes uh, in January of Panel Riot are brought to you by comic bento first episode is up now and i am talking about uh this book right here the fifth beetle Hmm. the brian epstein story it is fascinating and excellent go and check it out at your earliest convenience at panelriot.com awesome awesome all right uh so like i said we're gonna talk uh 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 new japan pro wrestling and uh aim and payton as i mentioned is fire pro wrestling's voice i was listening to some of you at the fun, 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 fun fest a little bit over the break. Uh, so that was kind of fun. Uh...